All right, you guys, so today's video is another tomato taste test. And it's been a long time coming because I know a lot of you guys may have seen a video of mine or a couple of videos of mine from years ago tasting some tomatoes. And I think it's, it's been getting a lot of attention or at least people have been uh, interested and wanted to see me review more tomato varieties. So that's what we did. I saw the interest in the videos that we've done in the past and then this year I decided to grow a whole bunch more tomatoes to see really what the deal is, to see if really there were any tomato varieties that could beat my favorites. And I have really four favorites, four varieties that I really recommend everybody out there. Uh, one, if you're, do, if you're doing it by a classification, your beef steak, my favorite beef steak is pink brandywine. Um, it's always my favorite. I love the southern strain. I love the texture of it. I love the, the chalkiness almost of it. It's got great flavor to it. It's so smooth. It's really what a beef steak should be. Now, if you're doing the cherry tomatoes, my favorite is the black cherry. And I actually have some black cherries right here. I can show you guys. This little guy is actually slightly larger than your average cherry tomato. Uh, but it packs a punch. It really does resemble, when I eat these, reminds me a lot of a beef steak. So it's really like a beef steak in a super small version. So I come out here in the yard and I go snacking on these things all the time. And instead of just biting into one of these big, these big guys here, these big beef steaks, um, I just get the whole package, the whole deal in this little small tomato. So it's the perfect snacking tomato, in my opinion. It's got great flavor as the dark purple tomatoes typically do. Um, so it's got the whole total package, the texture, the flavor, you name it, so hard to beat. Moving on to uh, let's say your salad type tomatoes or maybe your unique type tomatoes like that. Maybe uh, you know, your in-between sized uh, tomatoes. Um, my favorite is the green zebra. I love the acidity, I love the zest. It's so powerful, amazing. The flavor is just unbeaten. Um, even just, you know, typical green tomatoes that you would expect to be a little bit more acidic doesn't necessarily mean they are, right? Even though I would correlate in my mind those green tomatoes to having some acidity to them, um, to me at least, the green zebra has just blown me away with that acidity. And I don't find it in any other tomato uh, that I've grown. So for that, I think it's super, super valuable and uh, has a really nice place in the kitchen. And then of course, your last tomato, if you could categorize them by uh, in four different categories, I would say uh, out of my paste or sauce tomatoes, my favorite so far, excuse the noise, my favorite so far is uh, orange banana. And I've been growing that one for years. It performs well. It does get some blossom end rot if you grow it, um, you know, very close to other varieties, but it produces a lot. And the, the tomatoes guys, I'm telling you, make the best sauce. They really do. This year, however, I have been really made it a mission of mine to grow 20 different paste tomatoes. So we're going to make at some point this year, 20 different batches of sauce to determine if indeed there is a tomato that actually can beat um, the orange banana. In fact, there's, uh, there's one right here. I think this one's called, um, hmm, I don't remember the name of that one. But this one here is a paste tomato called Frank's Iranian. Um, so a lot of these Italian heirloom red tomatoes I've been trialing. This one here is the striped Roman. We have something here called uh, Chile Verde. Really try to go for a lot of the, the paste tomatoes or Roma style tomatoes that were out of the unordinary, either it was um, you know, like an Italian heirloom, like this Frank's Iranian, uh, that's been really been grown for a long time, or it's a really weird, interesting color. Like the orange tomatoes to me, or at least the orange banana, I think believe it, I believe because it, it has a fruitier flavor to it, it makes a, a good sauce. These green, Rome, uh, these green paste tomatoes, they might have a little bit more acidity to them. The dark purple sauce tomatoes might have a bit more richness to them. So I wanted to see really what characteristics I could get 
from these different colored tomatoes and see what would come up and how that would affect the sauce. Um, so, but in today's video, we're not gonna get into that too much. We're gonna mostly focus on these cherry tomatoes here in front of me and these big beef steaks. I have the first one is called uh, Pantano Romanesco. And I think actually this one here is for sauce, if I'm not mistaken. Um, or at least that's how people typically use it. But we're gonna cut it open and, and um, we're gonna see what the deal is in terms of it as a, a fresh eating or a beefsteak type tomato. Here we have the uh, pink, pink Berkeley tie-dye. At least I believe with that, this is what that is. It's pretty dark, so I would, really wouldn't classify this as pink. I would say this is a darker tomato, so I wonder if this is not what that is. That one's from Brad Gates, and then this one here is called Persuasion, also from Brad Gates. This one's about your mid-size tomato here. It's extremely beautiful. I think this is probably the most beautiful tomato I, I'm growing or have ever grown. I think it's more beautiful than the Black Beauty. Uh, that one is just like mind blowing. Like you can see the universe on it. Um, I think he's got a couple tomatoes like that. Let's see here. This one in the middle is called Goose Creek. It's supposed to be a pink brandy wine replacement. It's nice and round. It's got a good uniform shape. This one here is Gary Osenna. A little bit weird on this one. We're starting to get a little bit of mold. It's, it's just a little old at this point. Saving it for this video. Uh, this is your darker purple types that remind me a little bit, or should remind me of like a black creme, Cherokee purple. This one here is uh, new. It's a heart style tomato. It's called Taiga. Weird shape to it. Um, very interesting colors, very interesting bicolor tomato. This one should have a pretty amazing flavor to it. This one here was um, labeled as Owen's Purple. At least that's what I have on the tag. But to me, it reminds me a lot of like uh, a pink brandy wine, slightly larger. This tomato produces huge tomatoes, and I wonder if this is the... Um, the Lebanese, Omar's Lebanese. This could be, to, I think this is just is Omar's Lebanese. Um, I don't know. I have to uh, look for the tag on my Omar's Lebanese over there. But this one, I think, even though it was labeled, the tag I have underneath it is Owen's Purple. It's not Owen's Purple. I think it's Omar's Lebanese. It produced a huge tomato. And that's what Omar's Lebanese does. It was like three of these big tomatoes in one. There was another one here, another one here, just attached to it. It was mind blowing. Um, and then I think this last one here is, uh, <clears throat> this is Soldaki. And you can see those like uh, greener, that greener top to it. And then the bottom is pink. And I actually have quite a few. This one's been really impressive so far, the Soldaki. You can see the greener tops, it's not as ripe. This broke off the vine here. And here's another one. I've been impressed with this in terms of production, how early it is. I think that's really what the deal with the wrap is on this tomato. Produces a lot of tomatoes early. It's pretty, pretty impressive. All right, so let's cut these open because I think it's gonna rain on me any second. Um, hopefully it doesn't. All right, let's do the persuasion first. Go with beauty first. Very good tomato flavor. Not very acidic, a little bland, but it has a hint of um, something in there. Hint of chalkiness that you find, I think, in a pink brandy wine. Uh, texture, texture's all right. Get one more bite. This reminds me of like a old classic tomato. Tomato flavor first. Yeah, so for me, I'm gonna rank that one at like uh, in terms of a beefsteak. 
By the way, watch out for the knife, guys. Um, I'm going to rank that one on the lower end. I don't know where I rank it exactly. Let's go with the Sodaki. By the way, I'm going to make probably all these into paste. So even though, even though I'm cutting them in half basically for you guys right now, the tops or whatever's left over will eventually be made into sauce. Um, I just use them all. I don't even care if it's a paste tomato or not. I think they make great sauce. So Doki, a little tough. Texture's, texture's weak. It's not grainy, but it's weak. There's a pretty big core in it. Quite fibrous. Um, Flavor is also kind of weak. Yeah, I mean, produces a lot, you know? It does its job, it's early. Um, for an heirloom that's not a hybrid, it actually produces pretty well. The flavor ain't bad, it's not great. I would say it's probably an average beef steak. I'm going to go with the same thing on this persuasion, it's about average. Whatever that is on a scale of one to 10, a seven, right? Is that? Is that average? No. Let's say a three out of five is average. Let's go with, let's go with, uh, yeah. Let's go on a scale of one to five. So I guess an A is a five, a B is a four, a C is a three, and all the way down. All right, let's move on. This is the uh, pink Berkeley tie-dye, another Brad Gates variety. This one I've been impressed with. I've had enough, I've had a bunch of these so far. They go great on sandwiches. The texture is fantastic. Oh yeah. So like the difference between this Sodaki and this tomato here is it just melts right in your mouth. The core is so smooth. Everything in, in this texture wise the skin isn't bad, like the skin's not thick, you don't really even notice it. And the flavor is great. I'm gonna be honest. It really does have good flavor, so I'm gonna say that one's a B. It's not quite an A. Maybe on a scale of one to five, it's like a four, it's like a B plus. Maybe we'll give it a or an A minus, maybe it's like a 4.2. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, we're giving it a 4.2. You know, one bite, everyone knows the rules, right? <laughs> <laughs> I guess on the, on a bar stool scale, what would that be? Bar stool scale, that's probably a 7.9. <laughs> All right, this is Taiga. Woo! That's a beaut there. You can stare at this for hours. You know, you get a little uh, abstract painting. You know, what the hell the artist did. You're trying to figure out, you know, what kind of drugs they were on. And then, you know, you're looking at this and you're thinking the same thing. This, I think, is a Taiga. is from, like, um, some grower and some breeder in Canada. Uh... Oh man, I wish I remembered her name. Something Oliver? Oh, this is really upsetting. Uh, if anyone knows, put it down in the description. Uh, Karen Oliver, I think her name is? Is that right? All right, let's try this. This has got beautiful colors, should have wonderful flavors, weird flavors to it. These colors, guys, they should represent different flavors. And you, you, you bite into like, you know, this section here is a little orange. That middle is there is red, and then you got green. If I can get all three of those colors in one bite, probably would have a really weird, interesting flavor. So I'm going to go for this section right here. We'll see. Yeah. Whoa. 
It's a weird one, folks, but not very sweet. You can tell the bricks is a little lower on this one. Um, it's probably why it's starting to spoil a little. Oh, this is, you know what? This isn't Taiga. What am I saying, guys? This is Gary Osenna. I'm sorry. This is Gary Osenna. You know what's weird about this tomato? This one here is Taiga, by the way. We're going to get to that in a second. I always thought, at least when I've seen pictures of Gary Osenna, I thought this was supposed to be a tomato that's like black crim. Gary Osenna tomato. Yeah, I mean, it looks right. It just, somehow, this Gary Osenna looks way crazier than any of the other ones I've seen. You know, the, the seeds look right, but all these different colors doesn't seem right to me. Should it really be this bicolor? Do I have a mutation on my hand? Should I save seed from this thing? I feel like I should. Oh, there's the thunder, guys. Oh, crap. All right. Anyway, what's the, what do I rank this thing? Texture's good, flavor's weird, bricks is low. I'm gonna say, it's right up there with the 7.9. Uh, but I like the pink Berkeley more because of that bricks. I just have a sweet tooth. It's a 7-7 seven, seven on the bar stool scale. <laughs> We're just gonna do it like that from the rest of the video, I don't know. All right, Goose Creek. This one to me has been the most impressive. This is the closest thing to pink, pink brandy wine I've seen out of this whole trial thus far, out of all the pink tomatoes. This one, not as much as the other one I have. Texture's not as good. It's definitely not pink brandy wine level. You know what? I don't know, I feel like this one might be a little unfair to judge it. Because the other one was great, this one is just Pretty good though, guys. I want to say this one's a B plus as well. I'm gonna put it a little higher than the pink Berkeley. I'm gonna say it's an eight three or eight five because or the other one I have. All right. This here is the unknown. This might be the uh, Lebanese Mountain or the uh, Omar's Lebanese. Big beefsteak tomato. Again, the, the texture and the, like, they all kind of look the same. Let me be totally honest with you. This goo, deuce, wow, this Goose Creek looks exactly the same. Like, in terms of the internal pattern here. Like, I just know what this is gonna taste like. I just have a feeling. Yeah, a little more tomatoey than the other one, than Goose Creek, but better texture. Um, not a sweet. That one's on the same level as Gary Osenna. You know, slightly above average or something. All right, Tyga, hopefully you impress me. This is wild, this tomato. Ooh, it's tough, tough core in there. Yeah, 
Yeah, so that's a crazy bicolor right there. That's the Taiga. Karen Oliver, I believe is her name. She's been breeding tomatoes for northern growers, I think is her thing. If that's her name, uh, you know, please forgive me. Um, and as a northern grower, that's, that's important, but this plant hasn't really performed that well. It is only one plant, but Wow, this one's better. Better than Gary. I think it's the best one so far. Really smooth, um, nice texture. Uh, good bicolor flavor to it. You know what though? Out of all the tomatoes we've tried so far, none of them beat the, the pink brandy one. And I don't think they even come that close. All right, let's try this Pantano Romanesco. As I said, I think this one is really meant for sauce, but you can eat it as well as, you know, like this. It's not as ripe as I'd like it to be, so I'll be a little bit, uh, I won't be as judgmental on this one. So even though I'm going to give it a rating now and all that, I don't really think that's probably fair. Yeah, you can kind of tell this is made for sauce. You know, the texture isn't right. It's very meaty. Um, the flavor seems like it's, it's got good tomato flavor to it. It just seems like um, nothing crazy, nothing wild. It's not gonna blow you away in some crazy way. I want to try this tomato here because this one seemed very really impressive. I don't remember the name of this. Uh, this is a, maybe it's Fuego Verde. No, this is Chile Verde. Is Fuego Verde even a thing? Did I just make that up? Fuego, yeah, that's right. Yep. It's a Fuego. So this is from uh, Artisan Seeds. Fuego Verde is a true breeding plum tomato that we bred in our farm. It's juicy green one ripe tomato that is similar in flavor to our green tiger cherry tomato. You can slice it up like a cucumber. Plants are vigorous, uh, productive vines. That's true. Truly exceptional flavor. That's what I look for. Truly exceptional flavor. By the way, I have made sauce with this in it, but I did get to taste this, and I was actually really impressed with the with the flavor. Um, just eating it, and this is sauce tomato, you know. Yeah, it's got great flavor to it, guys. Um, the texture on this one's not right. You want to eat this fresh? I don't recommend it, but. I will bet any amount of money that would make a great sauce. All right, so we're done with the sauces. This is, um, I think this is Castelludo Genovese. My friend Raphael thinks this makes the best sauce, so we had to, we had to try it, you know? What does he know? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> this here is a, a stuffing tomato called Stemig Stew. So I guess, what you would do is you cut off the top somehow. Let's, let's just experiment and see what the hell this... Hmm. Yeah, check that out. So you cut the, the, top, the top off, the walls are pretty thick. And then I guess you come in here and you dig out the rest. And then you can stuff it. Like a stuffed pepper. 
Yeah, this reminds me a lot of like, wow. Yeah, this, this reminds me of what you would get as like um, a paste tomato. Very solid core. Wow. It's actually got good flavor to it. It's a pretty solid tomato, guys. I'm not gonna lie to you. This, I think, has a lot of potential in a culinary sense. Whoa. That gel is so tasty, holy crap. So what you do is I guess you just cut out the core, leave this in here, and these walls are very thick and they're very grainy. So they remind me a lot of a sauce tomato. We're getting rained on right now. Um, we're almost done. Let me just really quickly here. This is called uh, Lucky Tiger. I don't know if this is for sauce, I don't remember. This one, I couldn't figure out when to pick this damn thing. It seems very rough, or very tough. Huh. That's got some good flavor to it. That's pretty good. I don't know if you're supposed to eat it like a I think you are. This is a paste tomato, if I'm not mistaken. Very fruity. Now, I really want to put this to bed. The black cherry is amazing. This year I tried two different tomatoes. Um, oh crap, it's really starting to rain now. One is the black opal. It's just the same thing they say in the catalogs and the writings. It's supposed to be just like black cherry, but more productive, same flavor, yada, yada, yada. And then I also tried this one here. Oh man, what's the name of this one? Something, but it's just not the same guys. It's just not, the black cherry is so much better. Let me try this one actually. Eve's black cherry, I think, yeah. It's not doing it either. Not even close. The black cherry's king. I'm Ross. I'm packing up my tomatoes. I'm going inside before I get destroyed. Oh, that East black cherry actually has a weird flavor to it. We'll see you guys soon, all right? Thanks for watching. Check out other videos on tomatoes, guys. Hit that subscribe button. Thanks for thanks thanks again for watching guys. Catch you for the next one.